Tony Hardys, and welcome to another episode of Captain's Quarters Podcast. Mr. Davey Longwood and Miss Mandy Joe are with us tonight, and a cheers to all of you. That was supposed to be turned down. Please turn that down. Pardon us while we redo some some sound issues here. Just tear the volume off completely. Good. No. Bring me the remote. Mandy, you gonna answer ransom? I am right now. I can't do it verbally because he can hear me. Um, if you join the channel membership, it will give you access to be highlighted like Zachary Harker right. is, and it will also give you access to the emojis that I'm programming in. My apologies on that one. That was supposed to have been taken care of already, and it was not. But now we're back on and moving along. So how do you find us? First off, let me tell you about our sponsorship and how you find us. The St. Augustine Pirate and Treasure Museum is our major sponsor for everything we do. If you want a good, interesting tour, come out and see Captain Mayhem at the Pirate and Treasure Museum. If you want to join us, subscribe to us, like us, go to our YouTube, use that QR code that Davey popped up there. I know we're, in, in, we're not in sync yet. Something throws us off at the beginning of the show and I have to re re-sync my brain. But use that QR code, ladies and gentlemen, and... Go to YouTube, hit the button, like us, follow us, subscribe to us. The more of it do, the more we have. And the more we have, the more we can do. It's a vicious, continuous circle, but it is well worth it. And you, our crew, makes it well worth it. So there you have it. We always like to do eight bells to kick off things with, a little bit of honor. Eight bells sponsored by our family of reenactors, the Riker family. Spanish, British, and pirate, they portray them all, and they are wonderful people to have as part of our crew. On that note, what do we have, Davey? Eight. Eight? Yep. Oh, my. Aiden Canto was a New Mexican-American actor. He portrayed Sunspot in the 2014 superhero film X-Men, Days of Future Past. Paul Torres on the Fox drama series, the following, and A.J. Menendez in ABC's primetime series, Blood and Oil. He appeared as Rodrigo Lara Barnella in the Netflix drama series, Narcos. Aaron Shore in the ABC Netflix political drama, Designator Survivor, and starred on Fox's The Cleaning Lady until his death. He was just 42 years old. Chanel Jaquaz, born Paul Jaquaz, an American game designer, video game artist, and illustrator of tabletop role-playing games. Her notable works include Dungeons & Dragons modules, The Dark Tower, Caverns of Thracia for Judges Guild, the development and design of conversions on games such as Pac-Man, Donkey Kong for Coleco's home arcade video system. She was 67 years old. Teresa Magdalena Tessa Ferro, an American actress and model from the mid-1979 to 1980. Ferro took leading roles in three Italian genre films in Lucia, Lucio Fulci's horror film Zombie 2, Antonio Margarita's Vietnam War film The Last Hunter, and Joe Diamato's horror film Anthropopagas. Davey, I'm sure you threw that in there just to make sure I could have a tough time with every one of those words. She was 72 years old, ladies and gentlemen. Peter B. Crombie, an American film and television actor. Crombie appeared in such films as Born on the Fourth of July, Natural Born Killers, Seven, My Dog Skip and the Doors. His best known television role was as the crazy minor character, Crazy Joe Devola on Seinfeld. The name was used with the consent of, of Fox TV executive Joe Leonard Davola. He was 71 years old. Alec Musser, an American actor and fitness model. Musser, Musser is best known for appearances in shows I Want to Be a Soap Star and All My Children. 
Musser was signed to Silver Model Management in New York City. He was with Norris Model Management in Los Angeles until 2008. He had a big part in the 2010 film Grown Ups. In 2012, he appeared in the television series Desperate Housewives as a masseur. He was 50 years old. William Foster Hayes III, an American actor, recording artist, his song The Ballad of Davy Crockett hit the top of the Billboard charts in the spring of 1955. In 77, he originated the character of Doug Williams on NBC's Days of Our Lives, which he continued to play until 2023. He was 98 years old. Joyce Randall, an American actress best known for playing Trixie Norton on the television sitcom The Honeymooners. On Broadway, Randolph appeared in Ladies' Night in a Turkish Bath, and after she became identified with the Norton character, she seldom found other parts. Typecasting, it happened. She was 99 years old. Ruth Ashton Taylor, an American television and radio newscaster with a career in broadcasting that spanned over 50 years. She was the first female newscaster on television in Los Angeles and the West Coast. She received many awards and honors, including a Lifetime Achievement Emmy Award and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. She was 101. Wonderful. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our eight bells, our honorees. We raise a glass as Mr. Davey plays eight bells. Very good, very good. Joke of the Week is next with Mini Mayhem, sponsored by Salt City Comics. Go ahead, Davey, put old Mini up there. Ahoy, mates. Mini Mayhem here with the Joke of the Week, sponsored by Salt City Comics. Why did the pirate bring a ladder to the bar? Think about it, and I will give you the answer at the end of the show. I might know this one. I might, but I'll wait until the reveal at the end of the show. We'll see. I, if any of you have not seen the, the short that Minnie Mayhem did when he was out putting the nuts out for the squirrels, you should see it. It got a lot of views. Did we clear 3,000 views on it? No. Nah. You know? I know we cleared 2,500. Yeah, we cleared 20 in a short amount of time, which was ridiculous. Well, in, in 24 hours, it hit 2,000, and it was hilarious. If you haven't seen it, go to our channel and see it. Mini Mayhem. <coughs> well, I'm not going to tell you what he did. <laughs> you got to go see it yourself. Bye. Let's see. Quote of the week, ladies and gentlemen, with Spyglass Travel. You want a good walking tour of St. Augustine? Why, Spyglass Travel is the place to go. You need to call up my friends, Kevin and Angie and take a walking tour of the oldest city in the nation. They will give you some of the best history around. Spyglass travel, ladies and gentlemen. So what is our quote of the week, Mr. Davey? Martin Luther King Jr., how appropriate is that? Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. You are absolutely right. And on a day today that we remember Martin Luther King Jr., those are appropriate words to be thinking about. Very good, Davey. Spyglass Travel is probably very proud of that one. I have actually, over the weekend, I talked to Kevin Rose, the owner of Spyglass Travel, and he has expressed an interest to come back and do another show with us. So we've got to work on that date. Now, we have a question of the week. But before we do question of the week, because my question of the week kind of deals with today being a holiday, we have a video. Davey likes to put videos together to show various interest in things like today, Martin Luther King Day. So, Davey, if you have a video, let's see it. All right. The third Monday in January is observed as the birthday of Martin Luther King Jr., and is an official U.S. holiday. Dr. King's day is January 15th. Dr. King was a church and community leader who spoke out against racial discrimination, the unfair treatment of people based on the color of their skin or where they came from. 
His voice became familiar to millions of people during the civil rights movement, a time when many people were working hard to change unfair laws. These laws prevented many African Americans from using public areas, going to certain schools, or even entering some stores and restaurants. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. believed people should stand up and stop injustice any way they can, but never through the use of violence. As recognition for his ideas and dedication, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. The civil rights movement led to historic changes in our country's laws. In 1994, the U.S. government encouraged Americans to use the King holiday as a national day of volunteer action. Now, on the Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service, volunteers across the country donate their time to making a difference. How would you like to volunteer your time on the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Very good, Davey. Very, very good. And that goes hand in hand with my question now, because there are lots of days that we don't necessarily recognize as holidays, but we do recognize as special days. So here's our question. Sponsored by? Oh, Ancient City Sirens. That's right. We should make sure that Miss Gina is mentioned. Ancient City Sirens sponsors our question of the week. So here's the question. If you could invent a holiday, what would it be and what would you call it? All my ideas are used. Pirate Day, Rum Day. I can't think of any others. Maybe Mayhem Day. But let's see what we got later on in the questions and answers of the comment section here. And as you notice, some of you may notice, if you look there, Zachary Harker is in green. He is an actual member and he will have access to emojis and special things. And since he is our first member in the new YouTube standing, we're going to um, do something special for him. We'll see what happens though. For now though, Davey, it's always time to recognize some of our other sponsors like Florida Water Tours. And they sponsor this week in nautical history. So Florida Water Tours, you want to get a good tour of St. Augustine from the water, from the Matanzas Bay? Well, guess what? Florida Water Tours will do it for you. They have at least two different size boats to put you on, and they even provide food. Not for free. We're pirates. We don't do anything for free. But take a good tour of the Matanzas Bay and see the wildlife, the flora and the fauna, and St. Augustine from the water. Let's see this week in nautical history, Davey. Welcome to This Week in Nautical History, sponsored by our friends at Florida Water Tours. Experience the intercoastal waterway at its finest, featuring picture-perfect attractions. We begin this week in nautical history in the year 1493. Christopher Columbus leaves the New World and sets sail for Spain. 1501, Portuguese navigator Pedro Alvarez Cabral and six ships set off from Canar, India, on the return voyage to Lisbon. 1773, Captain James Cook becomes first across the Antarctic Circle. 1780, Battle of Cape St. Vincent, British fleet under Admiral Sir George Rodney defeats Spanish squadron under Don Juan de Langreal. 1815, War of 1812, the USS President, an American frigate, is captured by four British frigates. 1832, Charles Darwin lands at Porto Prio in the Cape Verde Islands, the first landing of his HMS Beagle voyage. And in 1940, German U-boat torpedoes Dutch merchant ship Arenskirk. 1947, SS Hymera runs aground at Athens, kills 392. And finally, in 1955, U.S. submarine Nautilus begins first nuclear-powered test voyage. And that was this week in nautical history. Very good, Davey. Very good. I the first nautical or the first submarine voyage of a nuclear submarine in 1955. Who would have thought? 
Now, at this point in time, we always like to talk about crew adventures. And the crew adventure that's on the horizon is Ancient City Pirate Fest, which has now been renamed to Ancient City Pirate Day at Thieves Market, February 3rd, 2024. It is a full day of vendors and entertainment and activities for the family from 10 in the morning till 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the evening on the grounds of the Colonial Quarter. We have Artist Row, where we have, right now as it stands, eight authors who have wrote books for the public. Pirate books, children's books, all of them, worthy of being guests of our event. We have Good Entertainment, The Shadow Players, Miss Gina and the Ancient City Sirens, The White Cats, a nautical singing tr trio. Actually, they have four or five in their group now, so that's a little different. And let's see, who else? Uh, Reuben Morgan and the tap dancers, my favorite people from Jacksonville, noise complaint. They're all doing shows that on our stage that weekend, that day, six o'clock, we will be leaning towards a more adult audience. It doesn't mean there'll be a lot of swearing out there, but there'll be alcohol and more adult comedy. And we are planning a pirate court. And as it stands right now, the judge for Pirate Corps is St. John's County Sheriff Hardwick. He will be our judge. And, of course, myself is one of the lawyers and a good pirate friend of ours, Gonzo, from down south. I don't actually know where Gonzo lives right now, but he comes up and does MC work for some of the other pirate events here. And I asked him if he would share the responsibilities of the evening with me. And he was none too, what's the word I want to use here? He was graciously happy to want to be a part of what we're doing. So I like that. And that's what this whole day is about. A day of pirate camaraderie. You can be a pirate, a part of a pirate crew, or not part of a pirate crew. You can be a reenactor. You can be a dress up in any way, shape, or form you like. But it's camaraderie for the whole day. A good time with vendors. And if you need stuff, who knows? There may be some garb and some equipment you need to outfit yourself. Come on out and join us for an entire day, February 3rd. There'll be more about it. And if you're interested, please go to wmayhemproductions.com slash OCPD, Old City Pirate Day. And we'll be putting that um, website up on the screen on and off throughout the rest of the evening. One other thing I'd like to tell you about. Many of you know that I've been doing cart rides through the City of Lights, the Night of Lights in St. Augustine. There are just three nights left this week, the 18th, the 19th, and the 20th, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. The 6.30 ride on both the 18th and the 20th have already been booked. So there are only seven rides left, and then it's done. So if you want to take a good ride around through the City of Lights with a pirate and make fun of people on the sidewalks and holler out R and whatever else, why? Go to tastingtours.com, look for the Night of Lights section, and join me there. Only seven left. I'd be happy to have you aboard. The 8.30 trips on any of those three nights, when the trip is done, I'm making a plan to go visit maybe Barley's or maybe Meehan's or maybe who knows. You can join me if you like if you're on the 8.30 one. On that note, we do have a special guest tonight. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce a, a very good friend of mine and somebody that has a different venue of entertainment. Now, most everybody knows that this fine person is a part of the St. Augustine Swashbucklers, as both personas, by the way. Yes. But many of you, I present to you one of my good friends, one of my good crewmates, Miss... D. Gregory. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi. Now, we're going to be talking about the world of female impersonations, female impersonators. Um, this is a chance where you can say, hmm, maybe not for me. Okay. We're going to be okay with that. But we're talking about entertainment, ladies and gentlemen. Entertainment. I've been in the entertainment world for a long time. Nightingale in Florida says, Ahoy, D. 
I've been in the entertainment business for a long time, and I will tell you this. I am friends with many female impersonators from back in the, our old Vegas days. Davey, do you have the two up that I asked you about, Frank Marino and Kenny Kerr? Legends. There they are, legends. There. And we became friends with them because we were there for so long out there in Las Vegas, and they had great shows that you could go and see. So that's another one. There you go. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Miss D. Gregory. Hello. All. Happy to be here. All right. So there's so many things that we could ask, so many things that we want to take this in a, an adventure to. So let's start with what prompted you to go to this venue of entertainment? Well, it started a long time ago. I was always in the costumes as a young person. And there were two movies that changed the way I thought about things. I always liked disguises and such. And always, as a young person, disguises, different people, whatever. But there were two movies named Homicidal, 1961, a William Castle film. And then in the late 60s, a film called Freebie in the Bean, starring James Caan, um, Alan Arkin, and it also had, but both of them had a female impersonator character in them. And I was so enthralled with the illusion that they created that I thought more than just a costume, I could be entirely unrecognizable as another gender. And my mind got to working on that. And I found it'd be fun to create other characters, not just in other roles, but in other genders as well. And we all do that. Maybe not as far as you take it, but we're we're pirates. Right. We're other characters. I play a character at Christmas time, completely disguised in that character. Oh, you um, do? The only thing that only way that people would know it's me is if they already know in advance, or it's very hard to disguise my voice and my accent. Very much. So. Yeah. So it, it's hard for me to disguise that, but. It, it, it's entertainment. It's it's part of what we do. So how about if I, I tell everybody the first time we met? Because it's hilariously funny. I, and I have a picture of it. We'll see that in the slideshow in a bit. All right. So I'm going to tell the story, and then we're going to have it. We have a slideshow that Dee gave us slides for, and Dee's going to explain some of these things. But we met for the very first time a pirate event down in Daytona at the mall there in Daytona. It, it's been what, 11 years? 12, 12 years ago. I think. So I'd never met Dee, but Dee knew who I was and came up and put a hand out and shook hands with me and made a couple of comments. And we talked for a few minutes back and forth and then went on her way. The other pirates that were standing there to me, it was hilarious because they were all going, what in the world? What? They, they, they were full of questions in their head. And they and one of them said, that was a guy, right? And I, all I said, the only thing I said to them, anybody ever watch Seinfeld? Man hands. That's it. That's all I said to them. And they all just kind of wandered off. And that was it. And then a week or two later, then Dee and I got a chance to sit down and talk and and he became part of the St. Augustine Swashbucklers. And she became, I got two people for the price of one. Two entertainers. Two entertainers. And as Mr. D, he plays a very formidable character that's on the edge of being a, a great um, quartermaster. But as Miss D, he plays a part of a pirate, a female pirate, not necessarily a wench, Although most people do not understand the true meaning of the word wench. So we'll just bypass that to another episode. So let's do this. Let's do your slideshow that you gave Davey. And Davey will pop the pictures up and then you just explain to people different parts. So of, the slideshow, I'm, I'm going to call, how did I end up here? All right. So the first slide, hopefully will come up very quickly. Oh, we have to go back one. Go back one, David. I <laughs> The one of uh, the, the that's the earliest one it says. Oh, okay. Then I was wrong. Uh, actually, that is the earliest one. So one thing I share with the captain is we both have Scottish lineage. My mom's of the clan Kincaid, and I carry that. 
but I was uh, in the Scottish unit that I had under Ben, so I got to show off my Scottish lineage at the time. We can move forward. I'm the second one, by the way. So here's the first time ever recorded that I was in pirate garb. And if you know me, White Robin Roundtable, that'd be her down below. This is actually our first date in 1981, over 40 years ago. You were in high school, right? Um, nope, I was in the Navy, but oh, she okay. was um, in early college days, if I recall. All right. So just my first time in pirate garb, so I'd started down this road long ago. And then, moving forward, speaking of your modern-day pirate ship, yes, that is a nuclear-powered attack submarine. Speaking of the Nautilus earlier... Um, and I had served um, in the weapons department on that, standing center watches, but that is a periscope of the USS Sea Devil, um, of which I was the first data system section to qualify. We can move forward. And you were out of Kings Bay with that one. Correct? Actually, I was out of Charleston. Charleston. Cold War. All right. Very good. Um, one of the things I joke about is we were the Cold War hide and seek world champions. Ah, very good. Um, I was also in the mid 90s featured in a Crossdresser magazine known as Lady Like Magazine. That's me on the cover. It was issue number 25. Um, the owner of the magazine felt I had an interesting story to tell because I had been very visible and then disappeared for a while. Um, pretty much had to bury D for my first marriage. And then when that marriage ended, D came roaring back because she's an intrinsic part of who I am nonetheless. So I ended up being featured in a magazine because of it. We'll move forward. I was also featured... In a 30-minute documentary, my um, girlfriend at that time, her roommate had to do a documentary, and she did it about D. Gregory, and she named the documentary Camouflage. That makes perfect sense to me, at least. Oh, it does to me. That's a very good, interesting name for, for it. I, is, that, is it still available for people to see? Um, it is in my page. If you go through my videos, um, I can probably find the link to it. It's probably also in my YouTube. Okay. Very um, good. D underscore Gregory underscore 1961. If you need that, uh, moving forward. If not, we'll be here forever. Um, I also struck up a great friendship with the Hooters girls at the fourth Hooters location or the second one. I don't remember now. It's Hooters on San Jose and Jacksonville. This was a Halloween. And of course, even then I was doing cosplay and I'd gone over the Yellow Wick Road. So after that, I'd struck up such a good friendship with them that I was invited and welcomed to their awards banquet, and they actually had me stand with them to take their group picture. That very tall girl in the back on the left is me. Taller than all of them. I had not shoulders above the rest. I am. All right, moving forward. If not, we'll be here at night. So this was a pivotal day in the life of D. Gregory when it came to being a pirate. Halloween about 12 years ago, maybe 13 by now, um, a couple friends and I, all cross-dressers, dressed up and went to St. Augustine and ran around St. Augustine in costume. And that's at the Pirate and Treasure Museum because I recognize that door. Hi, it is. It is outside the Pirate and Treasure Museum. And at the end of the day, we had got there at 10 in the morning. It's now 7 o'clock at night. I've been in three-inch heels for nine hours. And all you girls know, that's quite the task. And I'm walking back from the Columbia back to the marina to where my car is parked. And every step was, ouch, 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 <laughs> ouch. It had been nine hours in heels. And a pirate had come up behind me and said, hey, baby. I spun around with the tip of my sword in his nose and said, how can I help you? And a matter of fact, he just wanted a picture with me and him and his girl. And he told me about a pirate sail on the pirate ship in the harbor at St. Augustine and said, I need to come. And with that, I met more pirates and got involved in the community. So that was a pivotal day, pivotal day to my being here and moving forward. So cosplay even enters. So I am the father of three daughters, or the mother of I'm dressed like this, I guess. No, <laughs> I'm just a father. And strangely enough, we were literally and figuratively rock stars that Halloween. So it's not just limited to D. Which one's Nicole? Um, Nicole is Ace Freely, and I believe she's she's got the silver eyes. She's in the middle. Oh, okay. So the one in the middle is part of our pirate crew. Yes, she is. She's a big daughter. She lives in Austria right now, but she'll be moving to Las Vegas soon. That she will? Yes. And she's a very pivotal part of our crew. She does a lot, but even from over in Europe, she still does things to support us. So, And she's really got some talent. 
and she doesn't quite look like that. Um, but moving forward to another slide, we might just have a picture of her coming in. Uh, so speaking of that first meeting between the captain and myself. That was at the mall in Daytona for that pirate event. That, that was a pirate event that um, Angelina June put on down there a couple of years in a row. And that one was probably the first one or the second one, at least. And uh, a lot of pirates from all over came. And there you are. And so it's pretty obvious in this picture as we stand next to you that I'm no dainty little flower. No, not at all. <laughs> so I don't expect people to immediately see me and say, that's exactly what she looks like. But if they think I present well, then I've done what I've yes, wanted to do. Very good. Moving forward in time. So this is Mr. D. And see that young lady beside him? That's me, Dr. Nicole, as in the early days when she was joining with our crew and working with our crew. That's in the Easter Parade. Uh-huh. I was going to say, that's the Easter Parade, and that's our ship in the background. I that I want. Yeah, very good. Moving forward, because I don't want to be here all day talking about pictures. So the captain also recognized my experience as a female impersonator, and we did an all-fools ball, or, yeah, all-fools ball one year, and he asked me to perform two routines. This is my wife, Robin Lynn, or Robin of the Round Table, as we know her in the pirate crew, and me right before I put, went on to perform. And you sang that night. Well, actually, you lip sang. Oh, I don't do live voice. Yeah, my, you lip sang. My singing voice is not. Yes. So. But I did lip sing two songs, which is typical of the drag community. Yeah, and it was. It was It was accepted well by the people that were there, and we had a good time that evening. It was a lot of fun. Go ahead, Davey. But both songs were in pirate gar or pirate style. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures. We were involved with um, Dream Day as part of Dreams Come True, serving um, very tragically ill and terminally ill children. And this ended up being a, a very romantic picture. It's My a great picture, our, yeah. It's actually framed and on the wall in our home. We'll move forward. All right, what have we got here? Looks like you're a monk. Ah, and so more than just this, um, I was actually um, a, a bit part in a PBS special that our whole crew was uh, for Secrets of Spanish Florida or That's Secrets right. of the Dead. That's right. And, and here's the point where I was playing a Spanish monk during one part of that filming. That was the uh, that was the show that I got obliterated on and killed in. Died in the cannon blast. Died in the cannon blast. Because the cannon didn't launch, it blew up. Yeah. All right, moving forward. As we, so here's a whole another thing. Dee and Robin also discovered we have a starship nearby. Um, so up in Kingsland, Georgia, not far away if you're in Northeast Florida, there's a place called Neutral Zone Studios. You can look it up, but not right now. Um, make a note to look up Neutral Zone Studios later. Um, they have tours, and they have actually recreated the original series sets. And you can walk around. You don't have to be in uniform. Um, but we had a lot of fun with that. This is our friend Lauren, who was the captain of our um, Star Trek crew locally. And moving forward from that. And of course, if you do that, you've got to do this. Yep. Um, this is actually Robin and I in a short film filmed um tales from the neutral zone called endosymbiosis if you want to look that up you can find that on youtube under the neutral zone page as well moving forward though and of course now you see both versions of me along with me wife robin um d of course is out the captain's chair because I like being in charge. Um, we've, we've, we've talked to the people that own the neutral zone. And we're working on some ideas. We've been working on it for two years. It just calendar wise, it's always difficult, but we're, we're looking at trying to do a pirate. Us, pi uh, uh, us all day pirates going into a modern day spaceship. I think it'll be a lot of fun. episode. Yeah. So go we, ahead, Davey. Moving forward. And what we, ah. <laughs> so this was Halloween a few years ago. Um, in the costume on the left is my wife, Robin. It's actually one of my costumes for a stage performance I do. So one of my friends accused Robin of dressing up as Dee Gregory, which is hilarious. And, of course, the character, um, half character from Big and half character, sorry, from Up. But we had a lot of fun that Halloween. And moving forward. And then this is, oh, speaking of Star Trek, this is where I recreated the character. And you'll see I'm in engineering. Uh, from the Gangsters of Triskelion. Moving forward. Um, I also have incorporated Robin into some of my things. She's my Prince Charming. 
and a performance of Happily Ever After from Once Upon a Mattress that I do on stage. And we're almost out of slides, if not the last one. Um, oh, who is that funny looking then, guy there with you? And then, <laughs> there, and then there's a very charming and dashing pirate named Davy. Yep, Davy Longwood. Who inserted that on his own. <laughs> Thank you so much, Davy. All right, good so, job, Davy. Good job. Obviously, a wide realm of experience, um, not just entirely limited to drag or the art of female illusion. Um, but it also gives you other things to see or be interested in. Uh, lots of topics as well. You're also in a movie that we're doing together. Um, the shoots are all going to be towards the end of January, all through February. A pirate movie with our friend Vesta Miller. Hi, we are. And you play one of the pirates who wants to mutiny. So you're, um, and you'll be sword fighting with uh, Mr. Leon, the quartermaster of the St. Augustine Swashbucklers, who is supportive of the captain bartholomew is is the captain's name that i play in the movie and davy is the other mutineer so i've got two disloyal pirates right here on the set with me right now but um we've already got the um the swords we've we've done verbal walkthroughs of everything and and this really these these pictures just show the the wide range of characters that you portray Hi. Do you have a favorite one? I like being D because I can be so many different types of characters as D. Mm -hmm. um, not just Star Trek, but just different looks. I like um, having a wide variety of hair style, um, both pushing the envelope sometimes, sometimes very, very demure. Um, I've got everything from being Catwoman to 20s, flappers, of course, to pirates. Um, and, of course, Star Trek. So... I've had a lot of fun being careful. I think we went to a birthday party downtown that you were wearing a, a, a 20s outfit, flappers outfit. Mm -hmm. Or a, a, the birthday party was for a singing group that we were friends with. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen them around for quite a while, so I don't know what's happened to them. And I, for, for the life of me, can't remember their name. Um, but they were a very... Go get gone. That's it. That was it. And I mean, they were phenomenal. If they, they ever come back, they will never... Be able to hide from me i will come find them yeah they were very and good and they were a, they were like a a, 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 a a rockabilly was one of the words i was thinking of something else but it wasn't coming to my head i and no that's not why all the rum's always gone davy i didn't put anything, <laughs> I didn't up. Put anything up i know yeah. i know yeah but no it's i i literally have spent about 11 hours today on on the computer working on everything getting everything finalized for um, Old City Pirate Fest, and then come in here and sit here and put my eyes on this TV screen, too. Well, there it is. He's a so, bit bitleary, I think. Yes. Um, so many questions come up, and many questions may come up in our comments. Please feel free to ask them if you see them. Davey and, and Mandy will be looking at them. Ask whatever you want. This, this is I, – I just want to illustrate one – or illustrate, that's not the right word. I want to um, – I want to elicit the idea that we're talking about entertainment here. This has nothing to do with some of the other things that people jump to conclusions on. Oh, there are multiple. And, and it happens all the time. I mean, it, it and, does. And with female impersonation like pirates, there's a very broad spectrum of people who are all from this range of very great people to very difficult to deal with people. Um, who create the stir up their own trouble? But, they're, they're, but as a whole, most all that I've met are wonderful. And it is. As a whole, it really is. I mean, there are people that have actually come to me and said, you know, portraying a pirate for all these children is just wrong. They were they were rapers and murderers. and Well, believe it or not, that first word I just used is not necessarily true and punishable by death on, a, on some pirate crews. So the stereotype of pirates is is stretched way out of proportion at times and there are some other good things about the pirate history that's very important to us the same with any entertainment and I, my captain's corner is going to be about all of that wrapped up as the ending of our our time together so i and i always think of some of the some of the i've had several wonderful hilarious experiences with d and so i'm going to tell the first time the first time we met, we've already talked about, but the first time it became a, a possibility that you were going to join the crew. And and 
D, like like a lot of other pirates, will hang out with other pirate crews, and our crew was, was a crew he, he decided to to join. Um, Ransom Mayhem says, first, we love D and Robin in today's world of negativity. How do you deal or speak to people about it with their negativity? That's a great question. Go ahead. That's a great. How um, do you deal with it? Well, the first thing I, I try and make sure people understand, and I will say this here, no one has to like me. If you don't, if you have a problem with who I am or what I'm doing, I respect that. Um, I have to answer to my maker at the end of all this, and you have to answer to yours as well for your decisions and what you do. Um, but for the most part, like I said, my experience with the people in this community, um, not just the drag community, the cross-dresser community, within the people who dress, men who dress as women, there are multiple communities. Um, and most are all kind, sweet, wonderful people. Most don't want anyone else to know who they are, like Clark Kent and Superman, I guess, but hard to use that as an analogy. Um, but for the most part, I found if I just talk to people and sit down and have a conversation, because some people just want to Understand. express their frustrated opinion or their, or their unpleasant opinion, and they're welcome to it. Um, like I said, I don't try and get my defenses up too much because they don't know me personally enough to be attacking me. But they're, they're attacking, attacking what, you're doing. what their stereotype is or what their belief is or what they've learned within the belief system that they disagree with. Um, and just what I've been turned even where I worship nowadays, which is a mainline uh, Methodist church, uh, we're taught to love each other as we are, where we are, whether we smell bad, whether we're too tall, whether our skin's the wrong color, whether we wear um, nylons and cotton together at the same time. Um, you just love each other where you are. Um, in fact, what I'm taught within my church is there's two rules. Love God, love each other. No exceptions. Um, and if we all do that, it's a whole lot easier. But it can be difficult when people want to attack you for your presentation. So let me tell you the first time Dee and I sat down and talked about his Thank membership you, into uh, St. Augustine Swashbucklers. We're sitting there and I know, and I'm trying to be polite and respectful and I'm, I'm dancing around the subject matter of what's going to happen if Dee becomes a part of our crew. And Dee, after, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes of me not getting the right words out, Dee actually says, well, and, and it was about the fair that says, I don't want to offend you, but. And I said, oh, shut up and just get it out. You're so not going to offend me. The bottom line was that I, I just point blank said, all right, we are a family-oriented group, but we do events that have children at it, or we do events that have adults at it. Will you know the difference? That was the bottom line, and that was the question I needed what? to ask. Will you know the difference of when... When which D when character you are you going to be? Well, there wasn't a Mr. D at that point. That's true. There was just D. Just D. And, and at that point, I made the decision that, okay, we need a, a family-friendly character. And, the, and for the most part, what I found is the children really don't care. But the adults tend to get a little worked up. And so we needed a chance for me to participate, help with the crew, and not be in a persona that could be considered controversial. So this opens the door to the next story. And this is my one of, I find it hilarious. I'm not going to mention locations. We're going to keep that out of, out of the story. But there is a place that, uh, that the Swashbucklers and I have done many shows through the years. And it is a... And supported the events at. And, and, and the support was always for animals down in that area of, of, of Florida. And it, it's an open air beer joint, steak joint. Um, and I give too much away. Many people might figure out where it is, and that's okay. But we're not going to be rude to them. And before the event, he calls me and says, do you think it would be appropriate? Now, I'm thinking it's pretty much adult. It's a beer place. Adults aren't going to be a pain in the ass. Well, and I probably shouldn't have said that, but oh well. And I said, sure, let's take a chance. <laughs> While we're down there, one of the bartenders comes up and tells me, hey, there's some biker dudes over here in the corner, and, and they're talking ugly about your pirate friend. And I said, well, here's 20. Buy him another round. And I went and found D and said, we need to switch you into your other character. 
So by the time he'd gotten switched into his other character, they did come out looking, but didn't put two and two together. They didn't find this face. And it was hilariously funny and catastrophe averted. Was averted, yes. But it was still funny to me, and it's still a story that I enjoy sharing with people. But it shows that those of us in entertainment can work quickly to change the venue and the degree of direction that we go. Right. And you did a, you did a good job. So um, do you have a favorite? What? Wait, here, Will the historian. Well said, D. We have a saying in our UM church. There's room at the table for everyone. And as my pastor says, the day that is no longer true, I'll give up my seat. Ah, oh, that's a wonderful, wonderful that. one. That's, that's very good. So that's just one. instead of asking you what the worst experience you've ever had is let's ask you what the best experience you've ever had and i'm sure there's many but can you come up with one that pops in your head right away um there's so many um wow i hadn't thought too much um being recognized in a few places um by groups being recognized by lady like magazine was a big thing for me um being recognized as, as a Productive member of our pirate crew is, is, um, but wow, um, it's very difficult right now on the fly for me to think of a, a, I like catching people. That way. Moment. I, so, uh, and I'll probably think of it later, but if you think of it, then we'll, out. We'll, yeah. we'll throw it back in, but if you think of it, so do you have any plans to do anything we haven't seen yet or anything on the horizon that you're, you're considering? Um, we we are working on another costume for Robin, but that looks like that's going to be set aside for another year. Um, in the Star Trek world, okay. um, we were there's a thing in Barto called Sci-Fi Barto. Um, that's where I did the Gangsters of Triskelion outfit first, and we were going to do T'Pring from Time Will Tell episode for Robin this year, and then I was going to be her Star Trek minder. Um, but another family event has come up that we may not be able to attend Barto for. Um, um, but for the most part, no, I kind of try and find things and take things as they come. Um, I don't have anything right now that I can think of. Now you perform. Um, uh, go ahead, Davey. Davey. That reminds me of a story. So <clears throat> one time <laughs> Miss D was performing. I forget which, which nightclub it was, but I went with some of the ladies from the crew. I'll be the only guy. Door. And we went down to see Miss D and other performers. And, mm -hmm. and the humorous thing about this was, so here I am with all the ladies. They had all the performers. The ladies had all these dollar bills. But the ladies were handing the dollar bills to all the performers. I got more lap dance than anybody else in that. <laughs> <laughs> now, so there are several. There's more than one location up in Jacksonville for performers. Well, in this venue. There are. Well, there were three major bars. Now there's one major bar. Which one is uh, that well, one? That's in Cahoots. Okay. And Stacy, the owner, is wonderful, and they do a lot of benefit shows serving the community, um, not just being a nightclub, but actually a community service club. Um, and then a lot of shows get moved around to other venues. Um, they'll have drag shows at restaurants, at breweries, et cetera. Um, and I've gone and, and performed at some and attended some for friends perform. Um, so I've, I started performing in Jacksonville about just before 2010, 2008, 2009, I think. Um, in fact, um, I've got some friends who have been friends the entire time uh, within that community, and they've shown nothing but love. And I'm the outsider in that community. I'm the straight boy. Um, but they just love me and love D, and, and I really care about them and love them, and they've shown great kindness. Um, so you can find entertainment like that if you're interested in. If you're not, find other entertainment. There is. Um, I don't want to feel like I'm pushing my, and I don't have an agenda, so I can't use that word, but pushing my lifestyle upon anybody. If someone doesn't like it, um, and I've been very fortunate. I go out in public into normal everyday places as D, restaurants, uh, walk around downtown for a walk, et cetera. And, and even though I see someone smirk or someone roll an eyeball as they go by, I have yet to be harassed or approached or confronted by anyone 
um, in a negative way. Most people are like, wow, you're a really tall girl. <laughs> I, I, having been in the entertainment world for five decades, I find that entertainers, especially if they're in a venue of entertainment where they they have to be creative, magicians or musicians, and they have to be creative, not just actors, but people that create what they're creating. You're creating this character. I, I find them to be, and it happens when I get to sit around with other magicians, especially us other magicians that are all old now, and we talk about the creation of ideas and, and not who can do a better trick than another another right. magician. But we talk about the creation and the sharing of ideas and it, it's always wonderful. And I see it in in um, in crossover, no pun intended, in crossover <laughs> conversations with with other entertainers that I know. Um, and we've talked about it and, and we've talked about ideas on costuming for you and, and and songs you've asked me about songs that you could you could do for events and so we've collaborated on ideas on mm -hmm. what to do or how to do or how to enhance whatever the performances are that we do together so um it, it's it's always been my joy to have the same experiences that you you have there are some negative people in the world but believe it or not the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So it's always the negative people that get they so much more. Attention. What's that? They draw the attention. They do. And, and, and the news media and social media plays on that negativity. But as I've said in the, in the Pirate Museum, I have so many people. I've done probably around 9,500 tours. I've met a lot of people from around the world. And I find out that almost everybody on the normal level of human beings all have the same opinions and the same thoughts don't push things on me let me enjoy my life and pursue my happiness and i will let you do the same thing mm -hmm. so ransom says so just curious do you keep your head shaved to make the different wigs that you would <laughs> wear fit better no he keeps his head shaved because he can't grow hair Partly, yes, I can't grow hair. <laughs> and if it did grow, it looks look more like Nero, and I don't want to watch Rome burn again. So um, it, it actually doesn't help because having hair to anchor these into might keep them in place a little better. Um, now I have to glue them down in some cases. Um, but it does help. It actually helps more with the pirate character because in every pirate movie, there's a bald pirate. So I like doing that. Speaking of, though, um, couple things too. Uh, I've been blessed that I haven't been accosted or anyone really giving me a hard time. Um, actually, I, I, I credit a friend of mine with that. Her name was Nancy. And and when I first met her, she had been told about D, but I never told her about D. And when I told her about D, she said, we should go see dinner in a movie. And I went, no, there are people out there with torches and pitchforks who chase monsters like me. And she said, no, they don't care. And she talked about a friend who uh, his counselor said, most people really don't care what you're doing one way or the other. And how arrogant of you to think otherwise. Oh, that's a, and that's so a good thought. Every time that I would decline something, she'd say, most people. And so I started venturing out and doing things in the real world as the, and found out that most people really didn't care. No, they don't. You could be lying on the street and half will step over you. So Robin pops in there. That Robin is Dee's wife, and and she's sitting in the peanut gallery, um, or, or rogues gallery, I guess we could call it. But she says, "I'm very blessed." She, Dee's favorite thing is is magic shops because he likes masks. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you have yes. a, do you have a big collection of masks? So um, actually, I don't. But um, ten years before that picture of me in the first pirate thing, Disney World opened in 1971 in Orlando. And on Main Street, USA, there was a shop called The House of Magic. Yep. And in there, they had some really high-end masks of Frankenstein and Dracula and Wolfman. And at that age, at the tender young age of about 10, I think I was then, I wanted those masks so bad. I've always been fascinated with masks. Mission Impossible just totally enthralled me, especially in the early days when they would use the mask to become different characters. So all that's been the creation of different characters and using a, either a mask of makeup or a vinyl mask or a professional prosthetic mask um, has always been a fascination. So when you do D, D Gregory, the pirate, 
you do scars. Oh, Mr. D, yes. Or Mr. D, as we will refer to you. Um, and you'll do scars and you'll mess up your face with scars and, and look very hard ridden and 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 dirty with, with gun smut upon you. Mr. And, D's a bit of a working pirate. Yeah, he, he and, doesn't like the fancy dressy stuff. And and he, he is a good working pirate and a good supporter of the crew. Nightingale in Florida says, Who is your favorite character you like to play? Who do I like to prefer? actually um as D like as a performance or illusion of, um, I really don't do any particular characters. So I don't do Cher, I don't do Bed Middle, I do some of their songs and do similar looks to them. Um, but performing as a specific character is a lot of work. And to be honest, I'm much too lazy to put the time and effort in. <laughs> People say, well, you could be a great drag queen and performer. You could be on RuPaul. I'm like, no, because I'm not willing to put the time and effort in to costuming, dance practice, music practice. Um, the art form itself is very demanding. As any, as yeah. a magician, you have to work very hard at your craft to be some, to get somewhere, to get out of the small time with it. And I'll, I'm, I am a small time queen. I'm not a big name queen. You're not going to find me on RuPaul's Drag Weeks, except if they're taking and pointing at my picture and laughing, um, which I doubt to. Um, but um, I don't have a particular persona that I portray, so I don't have a favorite. I just enjoy being different characters. But so for asking. Captain Morrow says that heels can be rough after a while. <laughs> he also cross-dresses about three, one or three times a year during Halloween and select other events. And glad the anti-drag law in Florida didn't go through. Was that really a... a, a we, we, now, I'm going to cross a line here we try very hard not to go into any political realms but right. was that law something that you know about i'm quite aware of it um and and how it was sold uh, was to prevent a drag venue from allowing drag queens to performing to minors and i don't know act not actually minors performing for children yes and 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 to a person, every drag queen I know, none of them want to perform for children. Most of them think that's a ridiculous concept anyway. They'd rather be performing for adults at a club or at least mature people in doing shows that are, I do like an all-Broadway, but most of my drag performances are all Broadway-based. Um, so I'm known as a Broadway baby, or was in my heyday about 10 years ago. Um, but most of the drag queens I know don't want to be performing to children. Um, and they adjust their shows accordingly. Um, so it was more, I think, to scare the venues out of hosting them to give them nowhere to go than it was. And of course, if you don't give people a place to go, then they've got nowhere to go and they, the, it has to go underground. Um, and driving things underground doesn't necessarily make things better. No doesn't make things better. And as we talked about before the show, it might border on this then. Uh, as an entertainer myself and having friends in the in, the, in this line of work, I, there's no issues here. My wife and I have gone to shows before. There's no issues here. I do, though, have a, a small issue or a minor issue mm -hmm. in that I do not believe that it is a venue that children should be privy to. Right. You don't take you, you don't take children to breweries. You don't take them to cigar shops. You don't take them to comedy clubs. To nightclubs. To nightclubs. And this is just one more thing that, that I believe that you just don't do. Anything in this line is up to the parents to teach and work with their children, not up to society. That's just the way I feel. I don't I'm not I don't want this to be a political hack of any type towards anybody. But I believe that parents need to step in and have a huge, bigger role in their children's lives. Well, one of the things I said, and, and I may or may not make friends with this, but for all the people concerned about drag queens reading to children, um, I really think the parents and their families are missing opportunities to be reading to their own children. Absolutely right. Absolutely. And, and I can say that because um, my former spouse and I, we raised three lovely daughters. I have the hairline to show for it. Well, not this one. Um, the bald one, um, 
But we read to our children. We made sure they were reading at a young age. And because of that, they excelled in school. They excelled in learning and all doing wonderfully well in the world. And Nicole, of course, my daughter on the crew, is a fabulous example of that. So Ransom wants to know, are you more comfortable being D or Miss D? I, 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 <laughs> let me answer that. I think it doesn't matter. I think, <coughs> I think for you, it depends on what the venue is that you're going to to be a part of. I have more fun being D because I can just be silly, be whatever. Um, comfortable between the corset and the heels and the hair and the makeup, not necessarily more comfortable. <laughs> um, Mr. D's outfits are much more comfortable to wear. Um, but depending on the, the situation, I have a great time being Mr. D, but I also have a delightful time portraying D, and I have a lot of fun with both. So thank you. That's a great question. That is a good question. So Davey found another quote, and we're going to throw it in here. And it was, again, sponsored by Spyglass Travel. We get to have one more quote. When a straight man has way too much fashion sense for one gender, he is a drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> now, it says unknown, but that came from RuPaul. I don't know who actually gave the original quote. It was cited in the movie Tu Wong Fu. Right. Um, thank you. For everything Julie Nunoir. Sorry, I had to think about the whole line. Yeah, and, uh, which right. featured um, men in drag, of course, and well known men, Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes. Um, and there's a whole history of that. Yeah, line. absolutely. Put the one up there by Will the Historian. I actually um, have a picture go. of. There they are. Oh, yeah, there, there we, go. we go. So there's Wesley Snipes, John there's Leguizamo. John Legazamo, and there is um, Patrick, Patrick Swayze. Swayze. There are three mega stars right there dressed as women. And we're going to talk about that in a, in a few minutes. But And there's Robin Williams. You can't talk about that. Go ahead. What else did you bring up? There's Dustin Hoffman. An all-American girl. Yeah. Um, and there Red is... Red Skeleton. What's that? Red Skeleton. Red Skeleton. Red <laughs> Skeleton is the one in the hat, by the way. That's Red Skeleton. So... I mean, it, 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 it. You can find examples of so many stars, and I'm going to performing in the other channel. In, in my closing remarks, so my my son, Will the historian, says, "Amen." D, trying to get parents involved in stu in his students' academics can be like pulling teeth on an alligator while blindfolded, <laughs> and I'm sure it, it is tough. It really is, but it it it's it's not up to society or the newscasters or the politicians to tell us what we can and can't do or what we should or shouldn't do, especially with our children. So, and that's as far as I'm going to take it down that, that lane, because I don't want it to be a political discussion here. We're talking about entertainment. We're right. talking about the creation of characters mm -hmm. and the freedom of expression. D has better fashion and artistic sense than I do. He designs it, but I can make it. <laughs> what is that? That must be Robin. Yeah, it was Dana Thomas. It's funny with the Triskelion costume, the games is a Triskelion. Um, it actually Robin does sewing and she's a great seamstress, but because the way it had to be put on and engineered with all the different pieces, it had to be an engineered costume. So I had to take her way out of her comfort zone, say, No, we have to do it in this order, and these have to attach in this place. And she's just looking at me like the only thing you should ever, ever be concerned with when you are dressing in Star Trek attire is if you're wearing a red shirt or not. Because if you're wearing a red shirt, you're going to die. You do know why. Why? Because the security forces wore the red shirt. The the there, there you go. And who's always going to be the front line of Don't defense? Don't forget Julie Andrews and Victor Victoria. Oh, there's I, another one. You're absolutely right. And Robert Preston as well. She we played a, a woman, pretended to be a man, pretended to be a woman. That's a good one, too. Le Jazz Hot. Yep. Um, there, there, there are a whole lot of other examples that I'm going to throw at everybody in just a little bit. Um, but I want to, uh, let's see. I want to give D a chance to give a closing, but D's not going to leave. He's going to stay here with us while we finish out the show. But give everybody a closing of how you feel about or what you like about or whatever you think is a good way to close 
the life you have so far as a female impersonator. I'll touch on one more thing before we do that. Do that. Um, and, and the captain multiple times in this has pronoun me to death, which I have no problem with. Um, the fact that he cares enough to cite me or recognize me is absolutely kind and wonderful. Um, and, and I was in a nightmare world of pronouns. Um, at one particular space, I was performing with da drag kings and drag queens. And backstage at that is a nightmare pronouns. So what I learned was drop the pronouns, learn their names, and do everything by their name. That is Jonathan's. That is Lisa's. Not his or hers or theirs. Yep. And if we and then, but I'm not offended by any of that. So if any of you are like, oh, we just got to him again. It's if just that's the biggest thing you have to worry about. The you're best, worrying about the smallest thing. And the best part about it is you're D in both characters, so I can't right. get it wrong. Right. Just <laughs> I can't D get is it wrong. D is D. So. All right. So, um, so give us a good closing. Then we're going to do this week in uh, history. It? But uh, give us a good closing to this portion right now. So I've had a blessed life. And, and I've been fortunate enough that in the household I grew up with, um, my father, in, in the 70s, there was a lot of tension over race. Um, and my father made it very clear to me that the two types of people we need to worry about had nothing to do with color. There are good people. And there are bad people. And you want to take time to associate with the good people and distance yourself from the bad people. And that has nothing to do with the color of anyone's skin. Um, part of my experience of serving on that submarine is I serve with people of all creeds, all races, all interest groups, from bikers to yuppies to preppies to punkers. Um, and we all got along great because we appreciated each other for what we all brought to the table and how we served both our country and each other on that submarine. Um, so that really has carried a lot forward in my life and just appreciating every single day because uh, we did live a little on the edge out of that submarine. Of course you did so out be there. Be kind to each other. Um, give recognition to your higher power and, and just be kind to each other. So Scarlett says something that falls along with the lines here. Scarlett Deerhart. I think there's a difference between an impersonator, such as D, and the drag queens dancing in skimpy outfits, if any at all, like some are pushing. I myself is dressed as a man for performance sake. I I, I, I agree with you. That, that the, the... And I have friends who do the skimpy outfits and push the envelope and... and try and portray a very exotic, very erotic character in a nightclub with adults late at night where children and minors are not allowed. And that for some people is entertaining. And I'm like, yeah, I wish I could get away with that. Um, but it's for some people that's entertainment and they're um, entertaining to part of their crowd that likes that. So uh, with any entertainment, you're gonna, you're gonna cater to some parts of your crowd to draw that interest group as well. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, sir. All right, good question. And Scarlett does further say by, pardon me, that she respects D, Robin Williams, Julie Andrews, and all the like. Others who are wearing inappropriate outfits in front of children, not so much. And, and a lot of those, a lot of it that's hit the news that it's inappropriate. I mean, there were some that were completely no clothing whatsoever. They're just trying to elicit um, reactions. They're, they're, they're making everything reactionary. And those aren't the people we're talking about. Right. And I will tell you, be careful about painting the bad examples of society in any group, whether it's pirates, whether it's entertainers, whether it's truck drivers or taxi cab drivers or chefs in a local restaurant. There are very few that are really the bad apples, unfortunately, as we've noted. Yep. They get a lot of the press and attention, and everyone wants to paint everyone with that brush um, with a broad stroke when it's a very few that are, unfortunately, embarrassing the great many of us. It's the same with pirates. Hi. We, we, we have pirates that are very embarrassing to the entire community. Um, there are magicians that I've met that shouldn't, make shouldn't, money disappear. shouldn't be on and stage. And, and so every... every 
group, every category has their good and their bad. And it's just that the bad usually end up getting most of the press. Oh, yeah. and, and that doesn't help every, that doesn't help all the good ones. Upon that note, we always like to show This Week in History, and Davey always does a wonderful job. And our sponsor for This Week in History is Dick's Wings. Dick's Wings has a great lunch special all through the week, but they got a great happy hour also. And I just was there the other evening, had a beer and a rum, and then brought home a whole mess of wings for both myself and my wife to eat dinner in the evening. And her favorite is uh, Georgia Girl, and my favorite flavor is Pirate. And they got good burgers too, Captain. And they do have good burgers. Their lunch specials are great burgers, and they do have a great hot dog special too. So Dick's Wings out here near the shores on US-1, great place to go any time of the day. And on that note, This Week in History. Welcome to This Week in History, sponsored by our good friends at Dick's Wings Bar and Grill. Wings, salads, wraps, quesadillas, and more. No matter what your taste buds crave, they've got you covered. We begin this week in history in the year 1779. John Dickinson is appointed a delegate for Delaware to the Continental Congress. 1861, steam elevator patented by Elisha Otis. 1863, first U.S. newspaper printed on wood pulp paper. Boston Morning Journal. 1915. Congress authorizes $1.50 Panama Pacific Expo Gold Coin. 1929. Popeye makes first appearance in comic strip Thimble Theater. 1934. While robbing the First National Bank in East Chicago and Annapolis, John Dillinger shot several times by Officer William O'Malley, but survives because he is wearing a bulletproof vest. 1942, U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt sends his famed green light letter to MLB Commissioner Kennesaw Mountain Landis, encouraging baseball to continue playing during World War II. 1945, Franklin D. Roosevelt sworn in for an unprecedented and never-to-be-repeated fourth term as U.S. President. 1967. Rolling Stones appear for the fifth time on The Ed Sullivan Show. Reluctantly agree to alter the lyrics of Let's Spend the Night Together. In 1974, TV sitcom Happy Days, created by Gary Marshall and starring Ron Howard, Henry Winkler, Marion Ross, and Tom Bosley begins an 11-year run on ABC. Also in 1974, Six Million Dollar Man, starring Lee Majors, premieres on ABC TV. In 1976, Donnie and Marie, musical variety show, premieres on ABC TV. 1980, President Jimmy Carter announces U.S. boycott of Olympics in Moscow. 1993, Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday observed in all 50 states of the USA for the first time. And finally, in 2008, the United Nations announced George Clooney as a UN messenger of peace. And that was this week in history. Uh, you got a good one there with Popeye. <laughs> Very good. I am what I am. I very as always, Davey, you did a great job. Thank so you. So I, I have a way I wanted to close. We we've, we've got a new section here that's either always going to be mail call or captain's corner, and today it's captain's corner. And I would like to share some words. I hope are socially acceptable and or motivationally acceptable. So let's see. And I, I wrote this quickly so. When I read it over the first time, I saw it, said, man, I must not have been paying attention. But bear with me as I, as I go through this. Entertainment. By Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, entertainment is the act or process of providing pleasure, recreation, enjoyment, or amusement. A means of amusement or recreation is specially done in a public performance or by performers. There were a whole lot of words attached to entertainment. Amusement, pleasure, leisure, relaxation, fun, enjoyment, interest, occupation, 
refreshment, restoration, distraction, diversion, play, R&R, &R, jollies, beer and Skittles, don't get that one, and sports, all of that falling into entertainment. There are so many forms of entertainment that truly liking them all may be next to impossible. That's where not my cup of tea actually fits in here. If it isn't your cup of tea, then move on to enjoy what you like and don't cast judgment on others and their enjoyment. I've done comedy clubs since 1990, and things I said then would be hard-pressed to do the same words and routines today. I know it for a fact. I, When I had my friend T.A. Burroughs on the show uh, last year, one of our publicity pitchers was him, and he's a black guy, and me, and I'm obviously white, holding a bat box of Afro Jacks. <laughs> that was a funny joke back then, and everybody loved it. Today, we get in trouble for it. Many comedians admit to this issue, uh, and in fact, some comedians have backed away from certain bookings or contracts, even admitting that clients have presented lists of topics that are off limits. I find that ridiculous. I even had a client once give me a warning about things I should or shouldn't say 30 minutes before showtime. All I have to say about that show was, oh, well, and I got invited back. So it's not necessarily the part that's the, a problem. It's your presentation of the part. And you can skirt the issues always. My favorite reruns to watch are the Dean Martin celebrity roasts. And it baffles me. The jokes of these comedians working together of all persuasions and colors would now be looked upon terribly in today's world. Yet comedians in today's world, every third word is a cuss word. Some of them the C word and the N word, which I hate those two words in the English language. But yet everybody finds it funny. But the innuendo humor of Dean Martin's celebrity roast is not funny nowadays. To me, still is. Some of my favorite comedians, Don Rickles, Red Buttons, Shetty Green, Nipsey Russell, just to name a few. Red Fox, who was a dirty comedian. In fact, so dirty was he that he had to buy his own casino so he could do his own shows because nobody would let him perform anywhere else in Vegas. True story. Now, tonight's guest is someone whom I have, I'm a great friend with, and I have huge amounts of respect. And I've been so far in our relationship of being friends and workers and entertainers together for over 11 years. His venue of entertainment may not be looked upon favorably by some, but whom? Hmm. Let me throw a few names at you. We already threw a few at you, but here's some more. Flip Wilson, Adam Sandler, Red Skelton, Dustin Hoffman, Robin Williams, John Travolta, Eddie Murphy, Tom Hanks, Tony Curtis. Need I go on? All of those actors have played female characters. Real female characters or real female actors did not actually appear on stage until the mid 1600s as it was illegal in some countries for women to appear on stage. That means Shakespearean plays were all performed by men. <laughs> and it was around 1661 that women were allowed to start performing. Kabuki, Japanese. You know, originally both men and women acted in Kabuki plays, but eventually only male actors performed. A tradition that has remained to present day Male actors specialized in women roles are called onagata. Two other major role types were aragoto, rough style, and wagoto, soft style, all performed by men. There is such a push to stifle entertainment because of fear of hurting someone's feelings. This quote, I believe, says it best. And believe it or not, both P.T. Barnum and Abraham Lincoln can be credited with this quote. You can fool all the people some of the time and some of the people all of the time, but you cannot fool all of the people all of the time. Let's change that just a little bit because it still makes sense. Let's take fool out and put entertain in. You can entertain all of the people some of the time. 
And some of the people you can entertain all of the time, but you can never entertain all of the people all of the time. That quote fits. The, des the, the desire to destroy another for something that you don't like is wrong and should never be allowed in our society. We live in the greatest country in the world, as far as I'm concerned. You are entitled to your thoughts, your words, your beliefs, and your opinion. But nowhere in any of the words that tell you those are your rights does it ever say all of those rights are yours at the expense of others. It's not allowed. To each their own, not my cup of tea. These are things that people should learn to say. If it's not yours, move on. Switch the channel. Turn off the TV, close the website, and just move on to something you might enjoy as well. One last thought. There are some things that are truly disgusting in my book. Cruelty to children, cruelty to animals, and things along those lines. But we're going to leave that for a way down the road, another episode some other time. That's not here or now. Just remember this. Those that keep trying to censor someone else will soon find themselves in the crosshairs too. It's happening already. Speaking and speaking out is our right as free citizens in a free society. But just remember the words of the greatest philosopher of all times, Stan Lee. With great power comes great responsibility. Freedom of speech is a great power. And most comedians that I know as friends or that I am fans of, they understand that power. But they also exhibit and understand the use of responsibility. So I close by saying, just be ever mindful. And that's my words to close this segment. Now, upon that, guests on deck. Next week's guest, and we'll talk about future guests next week because I didn't prepare anything, but next week's guest is a friend of mine named Gary Sass. He has a tour company out of Jacksonville, and I've done many tours with him. And he will be our guest. He has a book that he's written for tour guides. And he's been doing the tour guide business for quite a while. And he's very knowledgeable on things that make doing tours work. I've enjoyed working for him. He's hired me for many different kinds of events. And sometimes throws some curveballs at me and says, hey, I've got this group. What do you think you can do? Okay. And so far, I've made it every challenge work. That's, the, that's also the, the glory of being an improv performer. It really, truly is. So, I guess it's time for Mini Mayhem to reveal. And... Okay, it's time for the answer to the joke of the week. Why did the pirate bring a ladder to the bar? The answer is, he heard the drinks were on the house. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that one. Yep, I sure did. I knew that one. Now, have we missed any good quotes or any good questions? It looks like we've done a good job. I've been trying to keep up with what's going on on there, but I think we've done a good job. Mandy, uh, Davey, looks like you were keeping up with everything. Yeah. We haven't missed anything, have we? No. Good. Um, plug in the word please for that quote. That is so true, too. Well, thank you very much. And thank you, Captain Morrow, for... for commended on the well said. Um, I, I'll, I'll give you the last words here from my brother, Ransom Mayhem. And he always, and, and he's, he puts a quote up there that our dad always said. He said that, you know, everyone has an opinion. They are all like assholes and they all stink. So, you know, my dad was pretty well forthcoming with the words. So it's been a great show, but we also like to make sure that we say thank yous. It is appropriate to say thank you. So, Davey, give us our thank you vid. The Captain's Quarters podcast is indeed a ship sailing the seas of the world, always in search of history, knowledge, and adventure. It takes a crew to run a ship, so we take this opportunity to thank those who help keep this ship afloat. The cast and crew, Captain William Mayhem, Navigator Davey Longwood, Gunner, Hellfire, Henley, Cartographer, Mandy Joe, The Powder Monkey, and Juan Cam. Helping others gives a crew purpose. Our treasured charities that we support. Inc. 
investing in kids. The Humane Society of St. John's County. Aelia's Acres, a no-kill animal rescue zone. And the cadets of the St. John's County Fire Department. The four major charities that we support. But there's always room for more. You too can be part of the crew and support this show in many ways. Go to Patreon, a small monthly contribution as Potter Monkey or First Mate memberships, or a single contribution. PayPal or Venmo. Go to YouTube, hit the like and follow buttons to join our ranks and support the show. It does take a crew. Thank you. Very good. A good video that we put together, and it's always proper to say thank you to everybody. So, Mr. D, Miss D, whatever character we are, whenever you're there, you're always welcome to be a part of our show and always a part of our crew. We always appreciate you and your character. And, of course, Miss Robin, too. I, yes. I wouldn't be here without her. Yeah, absolutely. She drives. <laughs> show our platforms, Mr. Davey. Uh, video, Captain. What's that? Sponsor video. Oh, yes. Something new. It, I forgot to put it in there. Go ahead, Davey. Thanks for the correction to the captain. Go ahead. Our sponsors are the power behind the wheel that drives this ship. Captain's Quarters Podcast. Our major sponsor is the St. Augustine Pirate and Treasure Museum. 850 artifacts on pirate treasures and history. Marco's Pizza. If you want a good pizza, that is the place to go. Dick's Wings and Grill. Great wings, but just wonderful lunch specials throughout the week. And Ancient City Sirens, led by Miss Gina and the wonderful dancers. And if you want a great walking tour of the oldest city in the nation, Spyglass Travel will do. And the wonderful talent at Rikers Reenactors. And a great view of St. Augustine can be seen from the Matanzas River with Florida Water Tours providing wonderful trips upon the water. These are our sponsors and we thank them wholeheartedly and graciously. Very good, Davey. That's a good video also. <laughs> now you can show our platforms. YouTube, Spotify, Instagram. YouTube, you're watching live, but it downloads to our channel. And then you can watch a recorded version of it on Spotify, Instagram, or YouTube. If you just want to listen to us, because you don't want to watch some of our ugly faces on screen. <laughs> Obviously not Mandy. Everybody wants to look at Mandy. Mm -hmm. uh, Stitcher, iHeart, CastBox, Apple Podcast, and Music, Amazon Music. We will be adding a few more to this list over the next couple of months. And of course, our numbers are doing well. Look at that, 1,489 subscribers. We're 11 away from my magic number of 1,500. We're doing great. Look at all the views. As I said, the video, the short video of Mini Mayhem and the nuts on the, on the <laughs> drawbridge really got a big coverage. And we appreciate all those that watch and pay attention to our show. It's wonderful to have you all here. Upon that note, put our email up there real quick, Davey, if you can. Please send us emails. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to run the show in the direction that would be interesting for everybody. Let me put it to you in this way. One of the codes of a pirate law of the ship, the captain ran the ship not just necessarily by what he thought was the best way to do everything, but every man in the crew had an equal voice in affairs of the moment. Major things that needed to be done were decided upon by the entire crew by vote. So I like to look at it this way. The captain ran the ship by the will of the crew. That's how he kept his captaincy, by the way, by running the ship by the will of the crew. We run this show by the will of our watchers and subscribers. We want you to be a part and give us suggestions. Let us know what interests you. Let us know what you don't like. I am man enough to take constructive criticism. I don't do everything right. It doesn't always work. And sometimes ideas I have 
may not be great, but hearing about it in a constructive way is always the best route to travel. So we hope that you will join us. Mr. D, Mrs. D, D of all characters. D of many faces. The D of many faces. Say goodbye to everybody, and then Davey's going to put up our call-out sign. So you were talking about the profanity of comedians. Yes. My favorite four-letter F word, free. Yeah. Second favorite, food. I, we'll stop there. I, I, I lost I, I lost jobs in, in, in Vegas because I would not go that that route. I just because I didn't that's not the kind of comedy I want to do. In a world where you can be anything, this is a quote I stole. Be kind. That's a good one. I like that. Very good. This has been a great show. And as I always say, when we have a great guest, we will go over the hour mark. And we have, we're almost right at the 90 minute mark. So Davey, it's time to sign out. Part of the podcast. Mandy. Part of the crew. <laughs> always. We can't do it without you. Mandy will wake up later when, and when the show's over. But it's always good to have such good crewmates and Davey Longwood and Mandy Joe and a wonderful guest. Cheers to you, Miss D. Cheers to you. All right. for that one too. Oh, there's a blood second I'm gonna plug the nerf guns.